Hi everyone, welcome to this session. The following talk is Turning Pipe Pandas Data Frame to Semantic Knowledge Square, presented by Jack Ting Ho. Please join me in welcoming speaker. Hello, I'm Jack, and welcome to my talk. And as you can see in the screen, um, I'm going to talk about pandas, not the very cute and squishy animal that we all want to hug. Um, it's about pandas in Python, which is a very popular tool for um, reading and um, exploring and also handling tablet data. Um, so today we got to talk about how to make this um, more powerful by putting it into a semantic knowledge graph. So in this talk, there will be a lot of code snippet and um, some links that I would like you to check out. So the um, to get this slides uh, actually is available online. The link is at the top of this slide. Also, um, here are my contact information on social media at the bottom. Uh, feel free to talk to me um, about Knowledge Graph um, on Twitter or GitHub. So. I'm very happy to be speaking at PyCon Taiwan for the first time. I'm Chuck, um, so I love open source project. I have been working in and contributed to various open source projects in the past. I have um, published some libraries, also contributed to other popular library, including a small contribution to Pandas. Um, also, I'm very lucky to be working for uh, with the team to work on an open source graph database, Terminus DB. If you're interested, um, please talk to me. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, also, I love Python events and conferences. Um, I've been helped to organize different events, including um, Pyjamas, which is a 100% online marathon conference. Um, if you want to know more, uh, please go to check out pyjamas.live. I also um, stream during the pandemic. Um, so right now I'm taking a break, but uh, the old videos are all available on Twitch and my YouTube account. So feel free to check out my streaming video about coding in Python. So, why do we love pandas? Other than that, they are so cute. Um, well, uh, pandas as a tool that we love because it's so powerful. If you are a data scientist or any data folks that work with tablet data, um, you would love to use a panda because um, it makes importing and exporting CSV very easily. It also provides an API to connect with various um, SQL databases. And also, you can work it with Excel. <laughs> so it's very convenient. Um, what I love about Pandas is that it would do some automatic type conversions. Um, for example, if someone gave you a CSV file, which uh, CSV stands for comma separated values. Um, of course, there are other CSVs that is separated by other characters, not a comma. But the idea is that each uh, single uh, value, which is a string, um, are separated by a separator. And you can put that you know, each line and then with this separation, you can put it into a table. But there is a problem. Uh, for example, if the value, the string, is one, two, three, it probably is not just a string. It probably represented 123 uh, as a numerical value. So how do you decide whether this is a pure string could be someone's ID number or a numerical value. So Panda do a very smart way of looking at every single row. If 
um, all the rows basically are numeric. So there is a high chance that this is a numerical value and pandas will do some automatic guessing for you. It works most of the time. Of course, there are times that it doesn't work. Then a user can actually pass in a dictionary to tell pandas, this is the data format that I want to use. Also, it provides some kind of data daytime passing um, abilities as well, which could also be very useful. But pandas, um, there is also limitations. For example, I found this um, example picture from a Medium blog post that is telling how to convert this nested <laughs> JSON structure into a pandas data frame. So if you just convert a JSON structure into a pandas data frame, something like this may happen. <laughs> Because JSON, uh, if you know about it, is like a Python's dictionary. So it will have structure within a structure. This create a problem uh, to convert it into a flat structure like uh, the pandas data frame. So this um, is something that we have to be aware. And sometimes, due to the nature of the data, it's best not to store it as a tabular format. We will talk about more of these um, conversions later in the talk, but what are the alternatives? So how about we put this data, just store it nested as what it naturally is in a graph format. So a graph format, I would imagine it as a 3D format that allows um, more complex structure, which versus a tabular format, which will be a 2D structure. So as you can see on screen right now, that I have a very complex graph just exploded. <laughs> this is a graph that I created um, with some historical data um, from the Shasha data set. Um, for details, you can look at our blocks. Um, this detailed all the civilization conflicts throughout history. As you can see, this is a lot of data that is interrelated to each other, that putting it in a tabular format may not be the best way of doing it. So how can we put data in a graph format if we were given a CSV. Can we have a tool that do this automatically? So um, currently I am developing a tool that could convert a, um, given a CSV, um, it should be general purpose. It should not be a specific CSV format that I can convert this CSV into a graph semantic knowledge graph structure. So a semantic knowledge graph, like I said, is a data model that provides a lot of uh, link to data. How it describes the data are how the data as an object related to each other. Rather than as a table, there is fixed structure of each row could be a record and you have the same um, different columns, which is different properties of that record. In a graph, you can have, um, of course, objects and objects could have properties that could vary. Different objects could have different properties. Um, they could also have more than one property, <laughs> they could also have another object as a property that created a nested structure. So I would say that is fully customizable compared to a table format. Um, or you can imagine it's uh, storing data in a knowledge graph is like storing 
data in a data lake, but with a structure that makes it uh, retrieving the information and managing the data more easily. And how um, we can develop this tool to convert any CSV or Pandas data frame into a knowledge graph. So there are a few things that we would like to be considered. First of all, um, we need the structure, the schema, um, to describe this data. So like I said, a tabular format is a flat structure. So to convert it into a graph schema, which is a 3D structure, it's relatively easy. Um, the other way around is a little bit tricky. It's like, how would you represent a box in a 2D <laughs> structure? You will have to make some compromises so it still presents itself reasonably well in 2D, but it's still, um, yeah, but it's not the same if you can just have a box in 3D. <laughs> And also, what are the data types? Um, like I said, Pandas did a very decent job of getting the data types from CSVs. So um, if you are a Pandas user, you know that we can get back the data type by using df.dtypes. And um, but Pandas use um, NumPy types to describe the D types. And also, uh, if you are a Panda user, you will realize that all the strings are cast as a NumPy object. So we have to do some conversion to convert the NumPy D types back into the Python built-in types. So there's a little trick that I did in this code snippet that will do the job. Um, so this will create a dictionary, like a mapping, to map from the NumPy types to Python built-in types. There's one thing that is missing from the Python built-in type is the daytime type. So in Python, daytimes are in the daytime module that you have to import separately. So in this case, I just added in afterwards. <laughs> But otherwise, all the Python built-in types would have a conversion in this uh, dictionary here. Um, there's other things to consider. In some cases, a table would have fields that reference to another record. Um, this will happen in the example that I'm going to show you at the end of the talk. So for example, if um, we have a table of um, people <laughs> and we also want to represent uh, person A is the friend of person B. Then you would have to link B to A or vice versa. In this case, then we need um, in a table, it will be probably referenced by an ID. How can we link them when we represent it in a graph database automatically. So that's something we would have to consider as well. Um, how to load in the data? Uh, because this tool is supposed to be doing it automatically, we have to handle different type of situations. For example, as you may know, uh, Py Python is uh, working in memory most of the time and pandas store its data frame in memory as well. If we have a CSV that is too big for your machine to handle, then we will have this limitation. What we can do is to load in the CSV in chunks. Pandas provide a way to read CSV in chunks. Um, it could uh, return a um, a generator, a reader, that we could loop it over. Um, but that would also create some problem. For example, if the chunk size is too small, it could happen that in that chunk, 
for a certain column, it will have uh, value 0, 0.0 or over. But for the other chunks, it will have other values that could be 1.2, 2.3, some decimal numbers. Not That is not zero. <laughs> so in this case, when we read in that chunk that have zeros, just zeros, um, pandas will determine that column to be an integer. That could create a problem when we wrote low in the other chunk that has other values because we can't represent a decimal number into integers. So to avoid it, we need to have a reasonable chunk size. Or there's another solution that you can use is to, um, of course, customize the, the type that uh, Panda should uh, take that column as, or you can just, if you see integers, just convert it to um, decimal values. Um, that's also have some downfalls, but that is one way to handle it. Um, after that, what we have to do uh, is to load in the records in the the, the data frame um, into a JSON file. So pandas provide a very good method called to dict, basically converting the data frame into a Python dictionary. Then we can further convert it into a JSON. So with that, we have to also use orient equals to records. That will interpret each record as a dictionary itself. For a whole data frame, you will have a list of dictionaries, each one representing each record or each row. There are also other ways to um, convert a data frame into a dictionary, including each column as a dictionary, but we don't want that. We want RN equals to records. Third thing is something that all data scientists love and hate. <laughs> they are NAs, not a value or missing values. So how can we handle them? I have three strategies to do them. The first one is to just skip that record altogether. So in some cases, for example, if it's some um, experiment measurements, if the machine is broken and that reading is not available for that specific experiment, then maybe it's better to discard that data point, which is the whole record altogether because that experiment is not valid. By giving the users to choose this option, then um, someone can just discard a record if there's any NA exist. The second way is taking advantage of a graph structure. Like I said, a graph structure have more flexibility that for each record or object, some properties can be optional. It is not required to for every single object to have the same properties. So in this case, I would skip that NA value and not attach it to the object when I put it into the graph database. The last is um, just prompt an error back to the um, user saying your data have some NA in it and you would probably like to do some data cleaning before you try it again. This provide the last way that if someone want to have more control, they can do it by knowing there's NA in the data and cleaning it themselves. So this basically sum up how I create a tool to convert a CSV or pandas data frame into a, a JSON format that I could store in the knowledge graph in Terminus DB. So how about the other way around? How can we take the graph 
data in terminus DB and put it back flattened into a CSV or Py uh, Pandas data frame. So that involved something that I call the flattening procedure. So like I said, the graph is like a 3D box. We have to find a way, reasonable way to flatten it so it will be presentable and reasonable as the table format data. Um, the first thing I did is to use the pandas data frame from records to change all these JSON records back into the data frame. So this first step may give me something like the example I showed you before, that a nested structure end up uh, persisting in the data frame. So that means we need the second step to expand it, which I could also call denesting it. So pandas provide a very nice method called JSON normalize to flatten this nested structure. But the constraint is this method will take in only one column. So I have to do it one column, the nest column at a time, and join them back together. The last thing that I would like to consider is to um, embed the object back into it. Like I said before, some data are interlinked and they may be referencing each other by just an ID to another object. But to put things back into a flattened table, sometimes it makes sense to go and grab the object and find this property and value and put it inside the data frame. So that would be the last step. So we have a few minutes to do a small demo at the end. But before I jump into it, if you like what I've been talking today, it's a very short talk. It doesn't cover everything. But if you want to learn more, um, we are some from time to time, we would organize workshops about data modeling in Knowledge Graph. So please check out the link. And uh, you can also read our blogs or chat with us on Discord uh, to know more and get certified to be a graph data modeler. So let's jump into the small demo. So here, I would like to show you how the tool that I have developed worked. Let me try to give you a quick look about the data frame. And OK, so um, for some limitation, my screen is not showing the data frame. But let me show you how it works. So um, first of all, I have uh, some data here. The CSV I want to show you is uh, Oops, is this uh, employee.csv. So let's see if I can show it here. Uh, it's not the best presentation ever, but you can see that here um, there are actually uh, some fields that are IDs of employees, and then they could be a friend of another employee. So I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but that's the limitation we have to work with right now. So let me clear this up. What we can do is to actually, oh, first of all, I have to um, do a little quick starting of the um, Sorry about that. I have to start the, uh, the server running first. <laughs> and then now we can try to um, do it with um, putting the CSV in. So uh, we have a lot of different commands available in this tool. So let's have a look. Right. So we have uh, import CSV and export CSV. There are also other commands, but uh, today we just focus on import and export CSV. So we can use import CSV 
to import the CSV that we want to import the employees.csv. First of all, we want to identify which one we got to use as an ID, which will be the ID column. And then we got to determine which fields that we have embedded this ID in. So in this case, I have used friend of and I hope I spell it correctly. Let me double check. So it's a uh, friend of and manage by. Yes, manage by. So these two fields, I will have a um, embedding of the um, that. Also, I would like to pass in a um, a name for this new object. Okay, this new type of object, I just call it new employee. So, and then also I would like to update the schema. This is how I do it. Since we only have such a small data um, CSV, we just load in everything in one chunk. And then records is now updated. So we can see it back by using a command terminus db and then docs you should be able to see now there's a lot of data in it but we will focus on the new employee that I just put in here there you go so or maybe let me clear that and do it again Yes, so you see that this is the data that we have put in. So for example, for check, uh, we are an employee and then we are also a friend of another employee. So uh, it's a bit difficult to see right now, but it's this, this employee that one is um, someone who is 18 years old and I can't find the name, name, is um, somewhere, yeah, here, Danny. <laughs> so check is friend with Danny. So it would be nice to show it in a graph format in a graphical presentation, but I'm afraid we are running out of time, so we have to stop here. Like I said, if you're interested, please contact me and we can chat more about it. Thank you so much. Bye.